I am Optimus Prime, and this message is to my creators, leave planet Earth alone, because I'm coming for you. Also, I probably should have, like, extended through the see-through, because, like, every time I have it in the middle, it looks like I have my head turning when I should have it just... Oh, no. This, this helmet was a pain in the ass to make. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another Transformers review, which... Technically, I should have already finished this, like, last year when Rise of the Beast was coming out, but unfortunately, a lot of shit happened last June, and by that, I mean, like, I got busy with school, you know, getting out of 11th grade, uh, whatever bullshit stuff was happening, I honestly can't remember, I just know that I was unable to wrap up the review series when Rise of the Beast was out. Also, I have no idea if you're able to hear through my helmet, so, I'm gonna take this thing off. <sighs> Anyways... And if you don't recall about uh, my Optimus Prime helmet, it looks completely different now. It looks more like uh, this helmet from the new movie Transformers 1 that is coming out this week. Which, since we are getting a new Transformers movie this week, I figured this would be the perfect time to try to wrap up this review series that I should have done about a year ago. So, yeah. And I did review Rise of the Beast like earlier this year on the day that the film was released last year. So, that was that. And I did Rob that I would... Uh, continue the review series around September for Transformers 1. Now, I have seen the movie, by the way, if you've not checked out my movie vlog for it that I finally posted last night. Well, tonight, like today, not last night. I also posted a video about how I transformed my old Optimus Prime costume into the new one for Transformers 1. So, definitely be sure to check those videos out. And technically, I've already made this video, but this is a redo because Last time I did it was back in November of last year, and I was like, no, this is this is stupid. I'm wasting my time filming this. I need to do a redo of this. When did I do it? Uh, all right, I'll do it on the day on its 10th year anniversary. Unfortunately, I was not able to do that, but uh, here I am now doing a redo video on my thoughts for Transformers Age of Extinction as I just finished watching it, and uh, this time I have notes to bring up any important stuff I would like to bring up, but I would take down the other video, the original, but... I'm gonna leave that out so you can compare which one you would probably prefer. I would hope this video would be better than that one as uh, I did a lot more better talk about my thoughts on the movie because just I try my best remembering certain stuff uh, for that video but just like this is in case I haven't mentioned uh, Transformers Age of Extinction is the longest freaking movie in the live action series and I need to get a haircut. I don't like why my, I don't like my hair that is like cur curly wavy. Oh my god. I'm gonna try to do it like this and oh. I don't look too bad, I don't think. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I should probably get a haircut, but I'm trying to have my hair grow out the way I, 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 want, I liked it was about three years, not three years ago, four years ago, but it's now become curly and wavy. I mean, my dad says it's not curly or wavy. Let's just say that it's both curly and wavy, because just like, my hair's supposed to be straight a bit or something. Okay, I'm messing with my hair and kind of wasting storage for this because I only have about like 59 minutes left. Plus, I need to be in bed in about an hour or so. I need to make this video and post it ASAP. So yeah, for this week, I'm going to be wrapping up my Transformers review series since Transformers 1 is coming out. Today, I'm going to be talking about uh, my thoughts on Age of Extinction. Tomorrow, the last night, then Wednesday, Bumblebee. Then, between Thursday and Friday, expect my spoiler review for Transformers 1. And I just realized I made end up seeing this movie three more times I haven't seen it because there's a fan event I could potentially do a vlog for that but I'll probably do a proper movie vlog on the 19th as I'm gonna repair my costume that sadly suffered casualties from the rain yesterday not yesterday two days ago actually and I'll try to get some reactions of me walking around um, the mall except this would be a different mall this would be the same mall that I went to for the Guardians of the Galaxy marathon so definitely expect some videos this week that are mainly Transformers related and uh you know what Let's just get this video started, because I've already, I'm, like, again, I'm already wasting stories just talking about random bull****. Okay, I definitely need to cut out some swear words in here. <laughs> I'm gonna go fix my hair. So, I probably already brought this up in my original video where I did film a review, but this is supposed to be a redo, so I'm gonna try bringing that up again, but try to speed run through this, hopefully. I don't know, because I should, I gotta be in bed in about an hour. So, yeah, uh, I remember watching the original trilogy. They were part of my childhood movies as a kid. Now, I don't know if I saw all of them, or at least a few, one or two, in theaters, because I know my mom has brought me to the theater a lot as a baby, and I was basically, 
you know, quiet in the theater, which explains why I love going to the movie theaters a lot. But yeah, I know we have like two more after number three, and I will say this. I probably already brought this up in my Dog in the Moon review, but I think that it should have ended with number three, even though I do enjoy four, and I'm a little probably mixed with number five. I'll, we'll get to that uh, tomorrow once I watch it again. But how did I came aware of number four? So... I remember I was watching a movie in the theater, this was probably between 2013 and 14-ish, like late 2013 and early 2014, uh, I don't know when the trailer was released, but the way I found out about Transformers 4 Age of Extinction was when they played the trailer in the theater, I thought, like, once the trailer was playing, I thought this was like a random drama thriller or something, but when they name-dropped Optimus Prime, or Transformer, just those two names in the trailer, that, like, I guess... When, uh, Mark Wilbert's character, Cade Yeager, mentioned the word Transformer, when he said, I think we just found a Transformer, that got my attention, like, I'm sorry, come again? What did he just said? And once they brought up Optimus Prime, that's where I completely lost my <laughs> especially when the next scene had popped up. Basically, this, these few seconds of the trailer is what got me hyped up in the theater. I don't think it's a truck at all. I think we just found a Transformer. Dad! I'm gonna ask you this once. Where is Optimus Prime? You know, we got a rule about messing with people from Texas. First time seeing that, I was not only shocked, but was also excited that we were getting a fourth Transformers movie. And similar to how I would love to re-experience the No Way Home hype, especially for Deadpool Wolverine, I honestly want to re-experience the hype I had for Age of Extinction because <laughs> I was so hyped for this movie 10 years ago. Oh my god! I can't believe this movie is now 10 years old! It's kind of blowing my mind that some movies I got to see while I was visiting my dad around 2014, like, they're now 10 years old, like TMNT, or the Lego movie, or, or, uh, damn it, I, I don't know what other movies came out in 2014. I know I have a list that I do, would like to make a video about talking about my top 10 favorite movies of 2014. I'll probably do that sometime in November. I was meant to do that earlier this year, but was a little bit busy. But yeah, I do remember seeing this movie in theaters probably once. Don't know if I saw it twice, but I do remember watching it probably a couple more times after it was out on digital and everything, but... I'll never forget my theater experience this movie. Now, I don't know if I had, like, a No Way Home hype audience reaction. I only recall folks clapping when Bumblebee showed up. So I probably had something similar like that, like I did for Spider-Man No Way Home, but still, though. <laughs> I know how folks feel about this movie. I know that not everyone's a fan of it or anything, or that this killed the franchise, or mainly the fifth one. I don't know, but I'm just gonna say I'm kinda in the mix with both sides on, like, I'll agree on some of the criticisms for this movie, but on the other side, I'm probably one of the only few people that do enjoy this movie. This movie kind of divided up some fans. I mean, technically not everybody digs the Transformers movies because they're directed by Michael Bay. And you know how he does with his movies. He does his usual when he's making his movies. But yeah, I could say that this movie is a guilty pleasure for me. And like I mentioned... I would have preferred if they just ended off with 3 because I thought that was basically a perfect conclusion to the trilogy and that 4 and 5 were probably unnecessary. Now, with that being said, I do enjoy this movie. Hell, I enjoyed the shit out of it the first time I saw it in theaters. And this is technically one of my favorite movies that came out in 2014. Is it one of the best in the Transformers series? Obviously not. There's definitely some problems here and there I have with the movie now being older. And like I mentioned, I could probably agree with some folks on the major criticisms for this movie. But on the other hand, I do enjoy it overall. It's a guilty pleasure movie for me. And since I've written notes for this, I'm gonna talk about my pros and cons at the same time for Transformers Age of Extinction. I do like the plot for this movie where the humans hunt down the Autobots after what happened in the Battle of Chicago in the last movie. And having to see Wretched get killed off was kind of heartbreaking to watch knowing he was in the original trilogy. But you wanna know what's even more heartbreaking to know? The fact that I had to find out about this three years ago, 
was, uh, oh, I don't know. Sandwich Wiki getting killed off screen. Yeah, that's right. Actually, you probably already knew about this, but I had to find out about this, I think, three years ago. I mean, I wondered why he didn't show up in number four or five of Transformers. I can understand that actors would be unavailable or that they don't want to come back or anything. I, I haven't looked up why he didn't return for four and five or anything, or just that. I already done three movies. I don't need to come back for number four. Just get somebody else, but just... <laughs> Uh, I understand why they had to go with a different cast for this movie, but you just had to kill him off screen? Like, are you kidding me? It's not just him. Everyone else we followed in the original trilogy are pretty much dead. Uh, his girlfriend's most likely dead. His ex-girlfriend is also dead. His parents is also dead. Like, everyone except for that one dude that did came back for the fifth movie. I forgot what was his name, but I definitely dug him in the original trilogy. He's the only one that's, that's alive in the Transformers universe, but... Everyone else but the other dude are dead. I can't believe that Sam was killed off. Tell there's a scene where once Optimus Prime wakes up in K. Yeager's barn, he brings up Sam's name or is like, Sam, run away, because while he was getting ambushed, Sam must have been with him, but unfortunately, he was killed off. Along with uh, any other surviving members that we followed in the original trilogy and that Optimus was the only one that <laughs> survived. Uh, the ambush. So apparently, Shia LaBeouf's character, Sam Witwicky, in the Transformer movies, apparently he died. Yeah, do you guys remember when the series was rebooted with Marky Mark and Optimus Prime was awakened? Well, you can actually hear Optimus saying, Sam, run. <laughs> And it is hinted that they were ambushed, and apparently good old Shia was, uh, was taken out. But yeah, since we do get a new cast in this movie, I do like, uh, Mark Wilbert's character as Cade Yeager. Tally, he does carry this movie. I will say this, there are some pros and cons to both Sam and Cade as lead characters. Like, one pro that Cade has that Sam doesn't is that he does actually do something in this movie. And does not scream their names a lot, like, Bumblebee! Sam always scream out their names in the movies, but in in this movie, Cade actually does stuff in here and does not scream. He he's basically a bit of a badass character in this movie. But I will say this: Mark Wilbert is kind of being Mark Wilbert in this movie. But since I like the actor, I'll let that slide. But I'm still not happy that they killed Sam off screen. As for the daughter and boyfriend, Tessa and Shane. Oh, where do I begin? So this year, I had realized that the actress that played Tessa in this movie is the same actress that played, uh... Oh my god, I forgot her name. I had just watched Avatar Last Airbender earlier this year, but she played, uh, one of the lead characters in The Last Airbender, which, oh my god, I am never watching that movie again. But I liked her a lot more in this movie than in that one. But unfortunately, I have to agree with Chris Stuckman on this topic. She was Michael Bayified in this movie because... You know how Michael Bay likes to shoot hot girls on screen? I mean, he had a hot British girlfriend in the last movie, because Megan Fox didn't want to come back for the third film. But I'll say this, I do like them in this movie, especially Shane, who I would prefer than that one college roommate from Revenge of the Fallen. I will agree with everybody else on this certain topic. The whole Romeo and Juliet law? <laughs> no, that, that was just stupid there. I don't fully understand how that's supposed to allow them to date just I'll, I'll agree with everyone else that, that that was just stupid in the movie actually another thing about it, Shane does say some stupid stuff in this movie like I'm not here to get your daughter back you're here to help me to get my girlfriend back okay a little hard for me to like Shane maybe but still I would prefer him than that roommate from Transformers 2 but not only do we get a new cast in this movie, we do get a new group of Autobots since, unfortunately, the ones we followed in the other trilogy are all dead since they're all hunted by humans. Uh, I do like the new Autobots. Hound was a bit of a standout as far as the Dinobots. Yeah, definitely badass, even though they come in, like, way later in the movie. But here's an issue I do have with this movie, and that is the runtime. I'm fine with movies being long, but that depends on the movie. Tally, I should be fine with this being 2 hours and 45 minutes, but just... Since it's directed by Michael Bay, and knowing how he likes to do his thing here and there for his movies, I think there are some unnecessary scenes that could have been cut out of the movie. Like, just basically trim it down, because, like, they're kind of just killing that for me, but... The third act kind of saves the movie for me entirely, and has me forget, like, any other issues I had. Like, okay, I'll let it slide. This is the only thing that's going to have me enjoy this movie, just the last... It's basically the whole entire Hong Kong final battle scene, which 
if I'm being honest, probably has to be in my top three final battles for the Transformers movies. I know we had the final battle from Rise of the Beast. That's definitely on my top three. But I think Dark of the Moon final battle is probably at number one. Which is probably my top three. Uh, the final battle for Dark of the Moon, final battle of Rise of the Beast, and then final battle of Age of Extinction. Actually, it probably will be in between two and three. But yeah, overall, I would watch that third act on a freaking loop, because it's just one of my favorite scenes of the entire movie. Probably one of my favorite scenes overall. I mean, I have a thing when it comes to city in destruction, like the final battle of New York and the Avengers, or the final battle in Dark of the Moon. Just basically, I like where a city is in ruin, but there's some badass action of heroes fighting off the villains and everything. I have a, like, I have a thing for that. I, I, I don't know why. Another character I did like in this movie was Joshua. He's the founder of KSI and is also responsible for trying to create their own Transformers that do end up going rogue thanks to Galvatron, who is technically Megatron, brought back to life reincarnated. But there is technically a tone change with this movie. I mean, there's definitely some fun ideas here and there, but around, like, probably the second act is where things kind of shift from we do go from humans hunting down Autobots to a robot uprising where the Autobots have to stop Galvatron from using the seed to wipe out millions of lives so he can have an army to wipe out the human race. Therefore, the title, Age of Extinction. Which, if I'm being honest, that's probably the real plot of this movie. Well, at least 75% of it. Well, the 25% is the whole humans hunting down Autobots plot. But like I mentioned, there are some fun ideas in this movie and some stupid moments that actually had me chuckling a bit. And I guess that's thanks to Michael Bay just doing his thing with his movies. I know not everyone's a fan of Michael Bay. I dig most of his movies. I don't know how many I've watched. I know that he directed the first two Bad Boys films. I definitely enjoyed the first one, which that was his directorial debut. Second one, he may have overcooked with that movie. Actually, speak about overcooked. I do think he may have overcooked with Age of Extinction. And I know I'm not the only one that is complaining about this, but what I mean by that is that uh, some of the special effects in here are not that great. Now, for the CGI on the Transformers, no, they look great as always, like they have in all five films. Well, not five, because we have Bumblebee and Rise of the Beasts, but still, though, the CGI on the Autobots do look good. It's the humans. What I mean by that? I noticed that there was some bad green screen on the human characters, and there was a there was a scene where uh, when Cade and Shane were trying to rescue Tessa that was sadly captured with Optimus early in the movie, around like the second act. I could have sworn that while Shane was freaking out about the ship flying into the space, the actor had to redo his lines, like basically he kind of messed up his lines and had to remember what were the lines. The, I don't know if I can find the scene on YouTube, but this is what I'm talking about. I give us 10 minutes. Is that what that sand is? Is the engine spilling up? Are you telling me that thing's gonna be... This is gonna be flying out of here in 10 minutes? Uh -huh. 10 minutes? I feel like he had to, like, slightly improvise or something, or he just messed up his scene, and that just got added in anyways. But there is one scene that actually bugs me, and it's around the final battle between Optimus and Lockdown. And if you pause at the right time, you notice that when Lockdown shoots a wall... You can notice what is probably a stunt coordinator or something get caught on camera and they probably forgot to CGI him out or something. I don't know. I'm like, every time we watch the final battle, that that one little issue always bugs me. So yeah, Michael Bay may have undercooked or overcooked with this movie. I don't know which is the correct word to use, but just basically, this, this was like, this movie was, I mean, I know this movie's a mess, but... When it comes to editing and finishing touches, yeah, no, it, it's not complete. It's like trying to rush on editing a YouTube video, and if I'm, like, watching a video and there's, like, a mistake I did not correct, I'm like, oh, I was in a rush on trying to have this uploaded on the channel, but I should have taken my time making sure it was all good and everything. I know, because there's a few videos I had that I kind of was a bit of a rush and had made some mistakes, like... Damn it, I, I, I rushed, I rushed too much on editing this video. Now, I don't know if I've already brought this up in my past reviews on the Transformers films, but I definitely enjoy the soundtrack composer Steve Jabliski has done for all five films, but I think my personal favorite has to be Age of Extinction. Especially when Imagine Dragons were basically part of the soundtrack making songs for Age of Extinction. Besides, uh, Battle Cry at the end of the movie, which, another thing I'll say. One of the things I do enjoy about these Transformers films is the ending songs, because we have What Have I Done, New Divine, uh... Crap, I forgot what was the song name for number three. And then we have Battle Cry, and then Torches, and then 
Back to Life from Bumblebee, then uh, On My Soul from Rise of the Beast, and now recently, If I Fall. It's basically an ongoing trend, but I'm all here for ending songs in each Transformers movie. But the best one is obviously gonna go to What Have I Done from Transformers. Like, that, that's just best decision that Michael Bay has done in cinema history. Hi, future me and in this video. There's something I wanted to mention before I bring up about uh, the best villain of this movie. So, two things. One, uh, T.J. Miller's character in this movie, as much as I felt bad for him when he died the first time I saw this movie, uh, having to rewatch it years later and find out that he was the one that made the phone call about uh, the truck wanting to get the money. Because earlier in the scene, they, he mentions about a phone call that, oh, if you see a Transformer, uh, call this number and you'll get a handsome award. Honestly, that that was complete BS. If he hadn't made that phone call, none of this mess would have had happened, and he probably would have still been alive and all that. But just he just made a stupid decision that I hate to say it, he kind of had to come in. As for the other thing, I do like the human villains in this movie. I don't remember their names. I do know one of them voices Blinky in the Tales of Arcadia series, which. How, actually, it was kind of hard to think of him as a different character because no one, he's the voice actor for Blinky. I was like, oh my god, I can't stop thinking about him as Blinky because he, he's, he voices Blinky in Tales of Arcadia on Netflix. But yeah, there was definitely an intense moment earlier in the movie when they were willing to kill Tessa. That's probably the only intense moment I can recall throughout this entire movie. I don't know if there was any more intense moments other than that. But I kind of dug the human villains for this movie. That's like, what, the second time we've had human bad guys because the last one we had um i forgot what was his name but he was technically working for the decepticons in dark of the moon he so that that was uh, have we had human bad guys in live action transformer movies now that i think about it it probably has only happened in three and four but anyways now back to the review i just wanted to bring that up before wrapping it up and oh my god i almost forgot to bring this up one of the best parts of this movie is the villain lockdown I think we can all agree that he is hands down the best villain in the live-action Transformers films. I'm sorry, Megatron, you're at third place. While Scourge from Rise of the Beast is at second place, number one is Lockdown. And one of my favorite things about Lockdown is his theme song. I always have a thing for villain theme songs, and just his theme has to be one of my favorite villain themes of all time. I should probably do like a top ten favorite villain themes. I don't know, just basically... I love his theme song. It's just, I just, I just love it. And Optimus Prime does have like a redesign in this movie. I kind of prefer the one he had in the first three films. In this one, I'm like not not against it, but just just kind of prefer the other one. I I would rate it like a six out of ten. Just uh, it's probably gonna sound stupid, but his chest looks like he's got man boobs going on. It's probably. I'm sorry. It's just they probably could have done a better job with the design. Or the new design that he had going on for number four and five, but just I don't know. Just it just, it just I'm a little mixed on his design. Not ain't it, but just a little mixed. As for the ending, I kind of forgot how I reacted, but I definitely knew that I needed the next movie right away because it basically left off on a cliffhanger. Sure, I probably was pissed, but was excited at the same time because as soon as it ended, I was like, "Oh, where are we getting the next one?" and uh, yeah, we do get the last night about three years later because this came out in 2014 and the, the last night came out in 2017. But we're definitely going to talk about that tomorrow, which I thought that was the worst Transformers movie in the series. I probably was a little bit wrong. I don't know. You'll know my thoughts tomorrow once I check out the movie again. Because I did watch all these films in preparation for Rise of the Beast last year. But, like I said earlier, I should have finished this review series before I went to go see Rise of the Beast. I was only able to do three reviews on the first Transformers films, Revenge of the Fallen, and then Dog of the Moon. But if I had to give a rating for this movie, I know it's not perfect. This movie is definitely a mess. Michael Bay has pretty, pretty, he pretty much overcooked with this movie. But, I still enjoy it. I, ha I have a soft spot for it. So... The best I can give it is an 8.5 out of 10, but it may not be the best in the series, I, I obviously. And I'm just saying Transformers 1, you know, no, yeah, I'm gonna say that movie is definitely better than this one. But this just happened to be one of my favorite movies that I watched in 2014.
And it's definitely going on my top 10 list, and you'll know where it's at once I make a video about that. And with that being said, that is just my thoughts on Transformers Age of Extinction. Now I feel better having to do a redo on this, but uh, be sure to let me know what thoughts comes down below on Age of Extinction now that it is 10 years old, which... Wow. Still can't believe this movie's 10 years old. And once 2027 is here, The Last Night's gonna be 10 years old. Like, oh my goodness gracious. It's crazy how some of these movies are, like, turning... Like 10 years old or something. I don't freaking know. It's just crazy to think about all that, I guess. That being said, I'll see you all in the next Transformers review. Autobots, roll out!